Welcome to 50 Ways to Succeed at Work, where you hear stuff about ways to succeed, even the most well-intentioned colleagues, advisors, careers officers and HR departments may never get around to mentioning. This is episode 31, Clutter Killer. Make sure your mess and disorder don't do you down. Our brains like order. According to MRI scans and other analysis techniques, this hardly stops many of us from wallowing in clutter. Imagine asking the late British painter Francis Bacon for his opinion of that. He might have responded, Clutter? I love it. I'm a dedicated clutter collector. As you can see from looking around you, my every floor and tables are a happy sea of debris, paintbrushes, wood, clothing, champagne boxes and more. It's true that I hardly have room to stand, but it hasn't stopped me from selling my artwork for millions. As a decluttering expert, Mr B could have done with my help. When he died in 1992, that chaotic studio was lovingly dismantled and reconstructed in a Dublin museum. It took them three years to recreate his unique mess. And then, of course, there was Einstein. He's a folk story to us professional declutterers. He may have been a genius, but Einstein thrived in clutter. After he died, a photograph of his workspace shows his place overflowing with papers, books, articles, and reports. And if you had asked him what he thought about that, he famously said, If a cluttered desk is a sign of a cluttered mind, what then is an empty desk a sign of? Since then, we clutter experts have been trying to understand its benefits. Nor is Einstein the only big thinker to flourish in disorder. Mark Twain, Steve Jobs of Apple fame, and Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook Meta are just well-known creators who like their working spaces in a state of disarray. No wonder we sometimes despair about explaining the importance of decluttering. On the other hand, let me tell you about Madonna. If you asked her about mess, you'd probably receive a short, sharp response along the lines of Don't invite me to your house if it's a mess. If I find clothes on the floor of my kids' bedrooms, I go ballistic and have to pick them up and store them away. Did you know that the physical environment influences our cognition, thinking and understanding? It also helps our emotions, behaviour, decision-making and even relationships. Now let's relate this story about clutter to your situation at work. Studies show that you're likely to focus and process information better and increase productivity when you rid your work environment of chaos. People tend to have at least three primary questions about clutter at work. Why do I keep clutter? Is there something wrong with me? How should I go about decluttering? Where should I start? And can clutter harm my chances of success at work? Just because there's a mess doesn't mean you're lazy, stupid, or something's wrong with you. It may just mean you've not found your ideal way of organising things. At work, it's best to avoid clutter unless you consider yourself a soulmate of Francis Bacon, Einstein, or Steve Jobs. Clutter is anything lying around in an unhelpful or disorganised way. It may not matter so much if it's in your home. You can probably live with a certain amount of mess, but not if you're working from home a lot. Our brains prefer order and hate chaos. You could be giving yourself an unnecessarily difficult time at work by putting up with clutter. If you're tolerating it on the dubious grounds that it enhances your creativity, the odds are against you. There's an essential link between clutter and mental health. Studies show that clutter may reduce overall life satisfaction among older adults. In the office or working from home, there are two main reasons you may cling to your beloved clutter. First of all, you feel overwhelmed. It seems easier to leave things undisturbed. Or the stuff's reminders. It may be necessary, such as reports, documents, books and objects, also to have three sets of remote mice, but it's unlikely. There's nothing wrong with you having clutter. There's always time to sort it. If you decide to declutter, let's consult our decluttering expert. Where should we start? My best advice is to create a simple plan and avoid leaving it to chance. We professionals use a helpful framework of time, reduce, organise and maintain. Let me explain. First, break your total time into manageable blocks. Dedicate just one hour every weekday to decluttering a single section of your home or office. You may be tempted to rush it and do everything super fast. 
at least I'll get this chore done, but it's better to take it slowly, maybe even set a goal for each session. Next, reduce by making three piles of things. The first pile is what you must keep. The second, you let live for another day whilst you think about it. And then guess what you do with the third pile? You chuck it. By the way, if you have more than three categories, think again. To organize, take small steps rearranging your stuff. Buy new containers where needed, but be careful not to go mad. Finally, maintain, which for a busy working environment means accepting that nothing stays tidy forever. Devote regular time to tidy it. For instance, you might spend 10 minutes at the end of each day putting things back to where they belong. Well, lots of good advice there from the clutter expert. Perhaps most importantly, notice how it feels as you declutter. People also want to know whether clutter at work can harm their chances of success. Well, in even the busiest situation, working in a clean, neat and organised environment can help relieve work-related stress. It can also help you think more clearly. Excess boxes, files, documents, storage cabinets, half-eaten food, empty paper cups and other litter can be a distraction. While you are unlikely to be sacked because of your clutter, it could still damage your journey to success. Why? Well, because while you may be happy with the mess, others may be less convinced. Clutter seems to say to them that there's something about you as a person. It can undermine you, not because you can't cope, but because others see your work style as disorganised, putting a question mark on your reliability. So what action am I proposing? First, by decluttering your working life, you'll suffer less stress and come across as organised. Also, unless you're a creative genius, reduce the mess around you and it'll help your brain make immediate sense of information. Avoid the risk of colleagues seeing your clutter and concluding that you only are trying to look busy. And my takeaway from all of this, be a clutter killer. And unless you're super creative, aim for tidiness. You've been listening to an episode of Andrew's 50 Ways to Succeed at Work. For more episodes, subscribe free to my regular weekly podcasts. You can catch up on past ones at the50ways.site, where you can also become a foundation member with access to e-learning units, further reading links, and the forum where you can ask questions, share problems, and join a growing community of people who seriously want to succeed at work. Now there's a new book and an audio version called You Guessed It, 50 Ways to Succeed at Work. Buy it at Amazon or the 50ways.site. Unmissable. Thanks for listening and bye for now until next week.